but she can we tell women's stories we lead with women's stories to rewrite the cultural narrative and i'm really excited to talk to madeline short today madeline welcome to she can you're the author of get the glow it's one of three books you wrote. You're a nutritionist and cook, a yoga and meditation teacher, and you built up the glow space for uh, people to access uh, for $6.99 a month, where they get yoga classes, meal plans, guided meditations, and more. Tell us a bit more about yourself. So yeah, my journey kind of began 12 years ago. I moved to Sydney, so I'm originally from London, but moved to Australia um and just completely overchanged my diet I got diagnosed with IBS I was trying to figure out what was causing it and I went to see this naturopath and she was like you need to change your diet and I was like but I drink diet coke and eat diet yogurts that's what the mag- <laughs> that's what the magazine say is healthy you know this is a long time ago and she was like, no, you need to start eating quality protein. You need to, you know, balance your plate with fruits and vegetables. You need to add in fiber. All these things I had no idea about. I thought it was all about calories and it was all about low fat. And it completely changed my life. And I suddenly felt like I had loads of energy. I felt like I could actually concentrate. I didn't have brain fog. My digestion and my bloating started going down and I guess it really opened me up to so many things I started doing yoga I started meditating and I think really for me like starting to live this very 360 lifestyle I really started changing how I socialized it was less clubbing and more going on walks with friends and then I moved back to London uh, 11 years ago And I set up my food blog and that's where it all kind of began for me, where I just had no idea it would turn into a career, but I just wanted to share my passion of how I cooked at home, tips that worked for me. And I really wanted to share that um, with others. And then I went on to study nutrition. And as you said, I've written three cookbooks and I've got this new uh, digital platform called The Glow Space, which is all about bringing wellness into your home. I've always been a big believer of making wellness accessible, affordable, attainable. Um, And I think this is a really great way of looking at it. And even though nutrition and food is probably the main thing that I do, I am really passionate about this 360 approach because I think that you can eat all the kale in the world or grass fed meat or whatever the new thing is at the moment. Uh, But actually we have to look at our stress levels, our movement, you know, our connection to self, our purpose, um, all these other things I think are really key in living a healthy lifestyle. Yeah, Uh, we've been talking earlier and I think the more you know, and we live in a time where we are completely washed, awash with information the whole time. And as you said earlier, there is a study that will tell you to fast and the same amount of studies not to fast. How do you feel that you can really add value to your um, mentees or clients or the people that you support on their wellness journey? Mm, That's a great question. And I think it's definitely something that I think about a lot because just like you and everyone listening, I often feel quite overwhelmed. And sometimes when you see, you know, a science professor saying something or a beautiful model saying something, you're like, well, I'm going to believe that person. Um, I do really believe in evidence that nutrition, you know, I think that's really important to have studies done. But I also believe that we are our own best teacher and we know our bodies the best. And if we talk about fasting, as you said before, you know, a lot of the evidence on fasting was done on men. So they're only really doing it on women more recently. Um, And I do think that we have to bear that in mind because our bodies do work differently. Um, And I think for women with their hormones, long periods of fasting often doesn't always work that well for us. Mm -hmm. So I think probably 12 to 14 hours is a good amount of time. But if you wake up in the morning and you're hungry, that is your body signaling to you that you need food. And some people don't feel hungry till 12 p.m. And that's fine. You know, you don't need to push yourself to eat if you're not hungry. Mm -hmm. And I think we've lost this connection to our bodies because... 
we wake up and we're told what to do, what to wear, how to live, that we need to try this new restaurant, all these things that are going on in the world. And that's amazing. And it, you know, I'm, I feel so inspired by it, but it can be really overwhelming for us, right? It's like, we're all trying to get it right. And sometimes it feels like we're getting it wrong all the time. And I don't believe that we are getting it wrong. The best thing that we can do is be our own detective, figure out what works for us. That is going to be different to someone else based on all different factors of, you know, your nationality, where you live, what your lifestyle's like. Do you have children? Do you not? Like all these different things really add up to how you can live your life how you eat how you kind of approach health and wellness um and I think everyone wants the magic pill right everyone wants the like just take this one supplement and life will be forever perfect and annoyingly it's not the answer however I definitely think there are lots of things that we can do to look after ourselves and sometimes I think we go to these extremes like Mm. one supplement or like you know chopping your broccoli in a particular way wait I don't know if you've heard this thing where you chop your broccoli you wait for it for five minutes but I think sometimes we forget about just like the core basics um hydration sleep you know crowding in good nutrition movement and we sometimes are trying to kind of focus on these really niche things and we're completely forgetting about the core basics and I'm a big believer in the core basics I really think that they are the fundamentals uh of everything um and I think that they're they're almost the ones that we want to focus on getting right and then the other little things can be little add-ons if you want to be more of an elite athlete or change your body composition or other things like that but for most people I'd say 80% of people we just need to do the kind of core basic things and that's how we'll live our healthiest lives so now that we spoke about it Madeline let's go into your top tips to really glow so yeah, glow has been my word from the beginning. I I thought it was an amazing summary of how looking after yourself feels. Um, and I've been using it for 12 years um, because I think it was so much about like getting lean, being skinny. But actually, I, when you really look after your insides, it shows on your skin, not just your skin, but in your you know energy and your appearance and the way you show up in life. So I think one of the best things that we can do is incorporate healthy fats into our diet. I think more and more people now have got their head around Mm. that fats are healthy for us. And we want to be adding in things like avocados, nuts, seeds, olive oil into our foods. Now, this is really important for nutrient absorption. So there's things called fat soluble vitamins Mm. which means that they don't actually get into your body without fat so you can eat a beautiful big salad with all the different colors of the rainbow but if we don't have fats in that whether that's a nice olive oil lemon apple cider vinegar dressing they're not going to absorb into us so we really want to always have a portion of healthy fats with all our meals whether that is your olive oil salad dressing whether that's a sprinkle of nuts on something you know whatever that is that's a really key thing to add into our diet for all our meals Mm. another thing is really upping our antioxidant rich foods you know we probably hear a lot about antioxidants often in skincare like vitamin c rich serums which are really preventative of like anti-aging wrinkles so we get that internally as well by eating our antioxidants so eating lots of berries, eating lots of green leafy vegetables. This is really good. And then, you know, everyone's different and not everyone eats animal products, but I'm a big believer in eating things like grass-fed, grass-finished meat, free-range eggs, um, some oily fish like mackerel, um, salmon, sardines as well. And these are really rich in omega-3s. And omega-3s are another really important fat for your skin they're called an essential fatty acid which means we actually need them um it's quite hard to get them in your diet not everyone wants to eat oily fish three times a week so you can supplement taking a really good quality omega-3 um as well and if you're plant-based or you don't eat fish they now make um algae omega-3 as well which is fantastic so that's a really good alternative to up your omega-3s 
um, if you don't eat fish. Things like walnuts, flax seeds, chia seeds, also really high in omega-3. Um, and I'm a big believer of crowding in rather than cutting out. So take your breakfast. If, for example, you just have maybe some porridge um, in the morning, why not add in a tablespoon of chia seeds, a tablespoon of walnuts, quality Greek yogurt, some fresh fruit, and crowding in all those nutrients is going to keep you fuller for longer. It's going to up that protein. It's going to up those healthy fats. It's going to up that fiber. And it's also going to feed your skin um, and make you glow as well. So I, I'm a really big believer of not cutting out, but crowding in. Because I think the minute you tell yourself, oh, I can't have chocolate or pizza, you're like, I need it now. It's like our inner teenager um, inside of us, just that sort of anyone telling us what to do, we want to do the opposite. So I think if we have this positive, abundant mindset, we're so much more likely to stick to our habits, keep going. And I think one of the biggest questions I get asked all the time is like, what happens if I have a big night out with my girlfriends and a kebab at 2 a.m. or something? And I'm like, no worries, because one day in your week doesn't blow out your whole week. Yeah. Suddenly, like eating a massive bit of chocolate cake doesn't suddenly show up on your hips or on your skin. Like it's about cumulative. It's about everyday small changes and habits that we make. And I really think that we don't have to be 100% eating healthy all the time. Like I'm much more 80, 20 than 100%. Um, but I think it's about the next day waking up making those eggs on toast and and starting the starting your week again rather than getting into this negative kind of headspace about it and I think you know the way we talk to ourselves our attitude our mindset also goes into how we glow you know when we feel good about ourselves when we're relaxed when we're happy I think that shines through um, and I think that's also a really key component not only to make this part of your lifestyle but also to kind of enjoy it along the way as well yeah access that joy every day yeah that's an intention madeline so i'm wondering what do you feel are the biggest challenges that your clients face where do we keep tripping up the whole time and how do you deal with that i think people often don't eat enough protein for breakfast that's something that i'm always been a big advocate of and i think Protein seems to be the new trend at the moment, but I've always believed in it as the best way to start the day. And I think if that's maybe adding three like scrambled eggs to your toast instead of jam or adding a scoop of protein powder into your smoothie um, or adding some Greek yogurt to your berries and nuts and seeds in the morning, that really balances our blood sugar levels. I think most of us are on this perpetual cycle of kind of, we eat something, so that's like some toast and jam or like a croissant or something, and it gives us a bit of energy. We feel good. And then we get this dip at like 10, 11 a.m. Then we feel knackered, so we drink some more coffee or we eat something sugary, and then we're up and down, up and down throughout the day, whether that's fueled on, on coffee, on sugar. Um, and I think this kind of means that we're on this vicious cycle of like eating something quickly to feel the energy and then crashing. So I think if we can try and step away from that, start her day with a protein packed breakfast and try and not snack until lunchtime. I think if you really need a snack and you're very active, that's absolutely fine. But I think we're in this very snacky culture um, where we're just grabbing things that often aren't very high in nutrients just to kind of get us through the day. And I think we should have natural energy from good quality sleep, good nutrition, um, move daily movement, if you want to have a coffee in the morning, that's absolutely fine. But we shouldn't be reliant on coffee or other stimulants to get us through the day. We should have enough energy to make it through. And I think that that's something that I see people just in this habit of like, well, I feel a bit tired. So I reach for some chocolate and, and a coffee like constantly throughout the day. So I'd say balancing blood sugar levels. I think the other thing that I see a lot of, of people getting confused about is just going extreme. So, um, for example, I feel like at the moment, what's really big is like the carnivore diet. So yeah. that's like Keto. just meat. Keto is everywhere. Yeah, meat, fruit. 
think that's kind of it and cheese or something and look if it does work for you amazing but I feel like sometimes these things are so extreme where you can't go around to your friend's house for dinner because (laughs) they're not (laughs) serving what you're going to eat and you know you Mm. can't eat out and you become very isolated and actually when we look at the research above sleep above nutrition above movement the most important thing for our overall well-being is connection it's relationships yeah and I think you know and I'm not saying oh you've got to eat to fit in with your friends or or drink alcohol to fit in your friends I'm not saying that at all but I'm saying that actually let's let's get our priorities right that we're still connecting with people Mm. eating with people having fun with people as our top priority for our our health and our well-being because the data shows us that that is the ultimate thing that makes us live longer feel better all these sorts of things I think I think we probably all know it whether we're introverts extroverts some form of good quality connection with people is is so vital yeah um so I think that you know I'm I'm a big believer in not having extremes I don't particularly like cutting out any food groups unless there's an allergy of course if there's an allergy or you don't like it absolutely fine but on the whole I think the more diversity that we have on our diet the better because we need to have this diversity for good gut health we know that our gut health is key for our immune system it's where we're absorbing all our nutrients it's kind of like one of the most important parts of our body um and i think when you eliminate 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 into a really small group of foods any food in large amounts isn't good for you Mm. it's that's why we can find data that says broccoli can kill us or meat can kill us because it's looked at in a very particular quantity of that amount because everything has high saturated fat or high oxalates or high phytic acid. So whatever the food is in huge amounts of it is probably not that good for us. So I think the more that we can open up our diet, the more we can diversify, it means the less likely that we're kind of just eating the same thing all the time. One is a bit boring and food should be joyful. It should be, but also we know that quantity is is key in terms of our nutrition so I think diversifying is a really really good place to start so I'd say a lot of people seem to go to these extremes and I think it's a mental thing right we're trying to fix ourselves we're like something's wrong with me (laughs) I'm going to focus on this diet and this is going to like you know change everything but I think that can be quite overwhelming for people as well and people start it then they do a week of it then they like fail and then they just go back to what they did before. So I would say instead of thinking like that, just start small. So maybe that's just, I'm going to change my breakfast for one week. For one week, I'm just going to focus on this. And then it might build into, in, at my lunch, I'm going to try and add in two extra portions of veg. And then for my dinner, do you know what? I'm going to try and eat dinner a little bit earlier because then I'm going to digest my food better and I'll sleep better because it is better to try and eat like I don't know 6 7 p.m so that you've got enough uh, two to three hours before bed to digest your food properly before we sleep and that helps us sleep better so I think it's about making little small tweaks in your day slowly slowly and then they become habits then they become like natural to you as I think sometimes people just try and do it all in like one week and they're like I'm going to exercise for three hours each day and we know that that's not realistic long term so I think you know just figuring out what's realistic for you at your stage of life with what's happening with all the different things and then stick to that that's that's what really makes like big changes Madeline, I love that you have very common sense, bottom line, good lifestyle advice, because if (laughs) I listen to girls or women of any age, really, there is a large proportion that constantly and either juice diet, you know, constantly on a juice cleanse or they're constantly on. And I just feel that can't be it. Um, So what would you say are you most proud of with the work and purpose? that you have I don't know if I've been asked that question um 
I think I'm most proud of my boundaries with work. I think with social media, you can blend real life with work where it's like, when does it ever end? And, you know, I've got friends who on their Saturdays, they will curate their perfect lunch with their perfect family to take a photo. And I'm quite private and I very much see work as work and life as life. So I'm very proud of that. I think that really helps my mental health. I think it's good for me to have that time away from my phone, not to be, like you said, constantly looking at someone doing a juice cleanse or doing other things. Because I think so many of us just are spending our lives looking at other people living their lives rather than living our own lives. And I think I came, you know, I've been doing social media for almost 12 years. So I think I've been through all the all the iterations and this is not to say I've got it perfect I've definitely you know made mistakes and in, in my time lots of them but I think that's probably what I'm most proud of is my boundaries of my work-life balance and that makes me really happy and it's something that I won't ever change and that might mean that I don't make as much money or I'm not successful because Probably if you do more, you could earn more. But for me, that's what success looks like. And I am really grateful for those boundaries. And I'm grateful that I can enforce them and put them in place. So that is probably what I'm most proud of. Man, and so what are your future plans? What are the next years looking like? What are your aims, your your things you're shooting for? I am wanting to grow my platform the glow space so this is a year old and as you were saying before it's got movement meditation meal plans for me this is the 360 approach to health and wellness um and I want to grow that so adding more content to that making that more accessible hopefully build that into an app it's just a desktop at the moment um I really want to learn more I'm always studying you know I did my Pilates teacher training last year you know I've done nutrition yoga meditation I'm always kind of doing a new course and I'd really love to do my functional medicine training I'm really interested in functional medicine um, I really like the specifics the kind of testing the the getting to the deep root cause of things um, so I think I would really like to do that in the future Um, I'd love to live overseas as well. I feel like I lived in Sydney for four years and I've been back in London for 11. And I just feel like I'd quite like to live somewhere else. I, I um, Yeah, I did some traveling in uh, Northern California and fell in love with it. And yeah, just just maybe maybe live somewhere else for a bit. Just have, have another adventure. Sounds amazing, Madeline. I would <laughs> love to get everyone to check out The Glow Space, definitely get the book, The Glow. And I'm so thankful for this really level-headed and, and, and beautiful approach to a joyful lifestyle that's also really good for our well-being and our health. Thank you so much. I really appreciate being here.